Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. In this final episode, we are going to write our first real shellcode, which is going to read and print on the screen this file. Before we will do so, let's come back to our last program we have wrote in assembly and let's think how we can translate this program into the shellcode. So just to remind you, our last program was Hello World, very simple program. If we would like to make a payload out of it, we can first of all, of course, compile it and then we can use object dump minus D and then the name of the file. And that's what we would get. On the right, we see assembly and in the middle, we see machine code. This is what is interesting to us. This is what makes our shell code. We can also extract it. And that's how our shell code or the payload looks like. There is just one main problem with it, meaning something what is called the bad bytes. If we would give that payload to be executed by the CPU, the execution would stop on the bad byte 00, which is the information for the CPU that it should stop executing the code farther. Therefore, writing the shell codes, as we are going to do in this episode, is fairly similar to what we have seen in the previous episode. Just we need to use a couple of tricks and a little bit special operations just to avoid the bad bytes. Let's get started. At the beginning, let's create our game plan. We will have a couple of steps in our program. The first step will be to create the file name. We want to put the file name, file name on the stack. So the first step is put file name on stack just to read it later on from stack. The second one and the file is of course following. So that's the first step and probably the most tricky here. The second step is we want to open the file. Then step three, we want to read a file and step, step three and step for final one, we want to write content on screen. First step is the most probably the most difficult and a little bit different than what we have seen in the previous episodes. How to put this name on stack so we can later on grab it to open the file, read it and write the content on the screen. So we want to move the name of this file to some register, let's say rcx, and we want to put there this name but first problem is that each char is a one byte so what we have here is one two three four five six seven eight and this is already the maximum limit of what we can put in our register so first time we want to put this part then we want to push this register or content of it to stack and then we need to put into the register the remaining part but it's only three characters so we want to complement it with five additional one which will, would be simply ignored by linux and this way we push it one more time there is one more thing we need to learn at the end of the day writing the shellcode is not trivial what we need to do we need to place path to the file in the reverse order that's how our stacks looks like and everything what is placed on the stack as we can remember from the previous episode is being read in the reverse order so what actually we have to do is we need to put on stack instead of c slash and so on we need to put into the reverse order dw ssap slash c and here what we need to do is we need to push actually te one two three four five six and of course we need to push it in hex so we need to translate it to hex so this will be we will check it in a second in the internet and this will be so the way we can translate it into the hex is very simple we can use the plendora of web pages which can help us with it we can use the first one place the text here then we click convert and this is what we want to put on stack so let's copy it so that's the first thing we want to put on stack just without of course the space and the second thing which we want to put on stack so we do at least two pushes and then there is one additional push on stack which we need to do 
which we haven't talked about it yet, we need to push value zero on the stack because the value zero on the stack will means that this is the end of the string. So a little bit complex operations just to push the name of the file on stack, which we will use later on to open that file and do different operations. The rest of the program will be pretty straightforward based on what we have seen in previous episodes. Okay, let's start writing our code. So we create the new file. Let's say shellcode ASM. And we don't need to have section data in this episode. So we will go straight away to text and then we define our main function and then let's try to do the same what we have been doing in the previous episodes so to terminate to close properly the program and in order to do so we want to move the value 60 to the register of course and this is going to be our first surprise if we do syscall we save the file and then we compile it okay and let's see the machine code for it so we use that instruction just to change the name of the file what we see here is we see that we have the bad bytes the reason for that those are here the reason for that is because we are trying to put a very small number in the very big register what actually we should do we should use a way smaller register we compile our program one more time and now we see that this, by doing that we avoid the, our bad bytes so this is the another thing to to learn is to use the proper size of registers depends on the situation this register is the eight bytes register one byte what is exactly needed to save that number so we are we will need to use the proper size registers okay let's move on so let's split it into the sections the first section is going to put file name on stack the second section is open a file read a file and then print a file putting the name of the file is fairly straightforward when we know that we need to put it in the reverse order and we know what is our hex representation of the file name then it's pretty straightforward what we can do is we need to first push zero so we can move to some register rdx let's say value zero and then let's push rdx and then we move to another register let's like let's say like this the value representing our shell our file name which is this one copy paste and push rcx and one more time to the same register 0x means that is of of course hex and the second part of the file name was like this and hopefully will be without any errors okay and we push it as well push rtx okay and let's compile our program and let's see how our machine code looks like so far we will pay a special attention to the bad bytes and we haven't saved the file so we repeat the exercise and how our machine code unfortunately consists the bad bytes and the line when the bad bytes are created is the first line because of exactly the same reason as we had previously the bad bytes at the end we are trying to push a very small number to the register just for the sake of having the value zero in that register the another way very popular way in writing the shell code is instead of moving value zero use the operation xor and the name of the register which will of course make sure that the register value is zero let's compile our program one more time and this this time we are again without any bad byte we can move forward now the syscall to open the file it's having number two so we need to move to the smallest possible register the value two and call a syscall the name of the file 
should be passed as the parameter to that function in the register RDI. So move RDI and we want to move register RSP. Register RSP, this is the register which is pointing to the stack. So by having this line, we are pushing the address of the stack, so the place where we have saved the file name, to this register, which is used as the parameter to the function which is opening the file. If the file will be open successful, in the register RAX, we should have the reference to that file, which will should allow us to read that file. Moving forward, syscall to read a file is zero. So we do again XOR, very popular op operations in writing the shell codes. And then we are calling the syscall. The parameters which we need to pass this time, there is a couple of them. The first one is RDI, which should consist the reference to the file which we have opened. So RAX, as we remember, the RAX will have the reference to the file which we have opened if the previous syscall was successful. Then to the register RSI, we want to put the address of the place where we want assembly to place the outcome of reading our file. We want to put the content of the file on the stock. And one more thing, we want to say, specify how many characters we should read from that file. So we are using the syscall zero to read the files. And then in RDI, we are giving the reference to the, to the file. In RSI, we are giving the address of the space to save the outcome of that file. And then we are specifying how many characters we want to read from the file. The last part which we are missing is the part to print a file to the screen. This is the syscall number one. So we can, again, we can do it in the multiple ways. We use a XOR to put a zero in RIX and then we increment RIX to have the value one and then we call the syscall. And now when it's going about the parameters, we want to say that screen, we want to print the outcome to the screen. So we need to set the register RDI to value one and increment EDI. And we want to save, say how many letters we should write, move RDX the register RIX, which should have the number of the letters we have read from the file. So what we have here is, let's go one by one to see if we haven't made any errors. We have put the file name on, on the stack, we have opened the file, then we have read it, and then in the register RIX, if everything went properly, we should have the number of the characters we have read, and then we print the file on the screen. So we need to set RDI to one, then we need to move to the RDX the number of the characters. The register RSI is already pointing out the place where the letters from the files are saved. So that's already set it up. And then we set RAX to value number one. So if we do our syscall, we should print the content of the file. Okay, let's save it. Let's clean the screen and let's compile it. And let's see how our machine code or maybe before do that, let's see if our shell code works at all. And yes, what we see here is we see the outcome or we see the content of the file which we wanted to read. And now we can see how our machine code looks like and let's see if it's clean, if there is no bad bytes in it. I don't see any bad bytes here. So it seems that by using couple of XORs couple of smaller registers than usually and a little bit tricks like increment we have avoided having the bad bytes in our shellcode and what was probably the most tricky we needed to put the file name on stack in the reverse order as we know from the from the previous episode that's how the stack will be read by our cpu so let's extract the shellcode Congratulations! So we have wrote our first shellcode using the assembly la language and Linux. It wasn't easy, it requires really extensive knowledge, but it was definitely worth it from the point of learning about assembly and how our CPU works.
And this is how we are ending our very short series about writing our shell codes. There will be of course more movies about the OSINs, reverse engineering, malware and other very interesting topics in cybersecurity. Click subscribe button to stay with us. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.